Well, hello. Um, I'm delighted to be here. My name is Adam Shoemaker, and I'm very fortunate to be the Vice Chancellor of Victoria University, but that is not what this is about. This is about an unprecedented AFL Grand Final this coming weekend, and it's almost upon us in a year which we'll never forget in any way. It seems that history has been made long before the first bounce. In that regard, for the first time, both grand finalists have a female president. As the final siren sounds, one of them will become the second club president to win a flag, joining Richmond's Peggy O'Neill in that elite super club. Victoria University is really proud to have an association with both of these incredible women, and it's a privilege to be speaking with both of them today on the eve of the grand final. So Kate Roffey is not only the president of Melbourne Football Club, but is a, a recent member of Victoria University Council and a delightful collaborator on many important things that we're doing together. Carly Watson Wheeler is the president of the Western Bulldogs, Victoria University's proud partner for many, many years. We really can't lose with this combination. But thank you both to both of you for being part of this in such a huge week for you. We really appreciate it. And if that's okay, I'd like to start with, if I may, with Kylie. Uh, how did you get to be the top dog, as it were, the president of this club, Kylie? What's your experience been like leading the Western Bulldogs this past year and this past season? Well, I'm a long-term Bulldog supporter, pretty much from birth. My family have always been Bulldog supporters and it, it's really in my DNA. So around about 10 years ago, I was approached to help out the club, which of course I was more than happy to do so, uh, which led to me being asked to join the board. And I've been on that journey ever since becoming the vice president and then the president last year. It has been such a wonderful journey so far, um, you know, one that really uh, I can't fault because I have such a wonderful board, such a strong executive, uh, fantastic staff, and of course, an exceptional football department. So it's a real honour and a privilege to lead the club. Well, we're delighted you're doing it. Just imagine the travel the club's been up to, Tasmania, to Brisbane, Brisbane to Perth, Perth to Adelaide, back to Perth. Have they ever travelled further? Well, it's certainly been a journey this time around. There's no question. One of the things that the Bulldogs, we like to do everything the hard way. So I think that uh, that has definitely come true this time around, but I'm sure it will all be worth it. Oh, you bet. Well, that's great. Now, if I may ask, ask Kate, you've, you joined Melbourne Football Club in 2013, and still to this day, you're the only female board member of that club. Could you tell us about your recent appointment as president and your vision for it? It's such a special club. Yeah, look, I think... Um, when we talk about succession planning a lot, I, I talk about my succession planning already and I've only just started. So it's really important that we know uh, what we're going to do and that we transition. And, uh, you know, really I'm a case of, I think, right person, right place, right time, um, as you are so many times in your life. So when, when we uh, wanted to enact our transition, the, we sat down as a board and we um, very openly and honestly said, who do we think is the person that needs to step up and, and take us forward? And uh, my fellow director said we think it has to be you it's not something funnily enough that you jump around and go oh fantastic because there's such big jobs both Kylie and I uh, work in executive roles elsewhere so these are unpaid roles and the only reason we talk about that is that we we have to balance that out with the rest of your life and so I sort of said well let me think about how that impacts because when you take these roles on you absolutely become you know a mother hen to 53,000 members in our case so they are very big roles and you do it with the right attitude in terms of oh, I've got to give my all to this role and that does take a toll in other areas of your life but having said that I mean <clears throat> to be the president of an AFL club is uh, it's totally unique for a start I come from outside of Victoria and I know when I came here how big the AFL machine is it's just it's more than a sport here we talk about it you know sort of blasé and say it's a religion, but there is something very special about AFL in, in the southern states, in particular Victoria. So you know that it's, you know, it's not just governing a board here. It's not just governing an organisation. It's so much more. So to be asked to do that and to think that your fellow directors who are all highly skilled in their own right have the confidence in you to actually lead the club forward, you know, really you, you just don't say no. I just said, well, it's my time to step up. So step up I did and um, we find ourselves vying for our first premiership flag in 57 years. Well you both have timed it incredibly well right when you think about it it's pretty amazing so it sounds like neither of you hesitated when asked it sounded like in your case it was just logical and Carl in your case too so that's incredibly exciting to think that that talent was there and the timing was right. 
So by contrast, if you think of the Western Bulldogs, Kylie, uh, they're one of only two clubs in the competition where that have achieved parity in terms of gender at the board level, which is a great thing to aim for. Um, our own professor, uh, Claire Hanlon, for example, who's the Susan Albert Alberti Woman in Chair, uh, Sport Chair, has spoken at length about the importance of this for the future of Australian sport of all types. I'm really keen to get your view on that then. What do you think? Does it make a difference to the board to have that gender equality? And how important is it to, de to decision making that you do? Well, the whole time I've been on the board at the Western Bulldogs, our focus has been around what talents and skills we need on the board and really ensuring that we're putting together a board that has a variety of backgrounds and knowledge and insights to, to really maximise the opportunity and the governance of the club. And so through that process, we've it's been a, a very, very focused and specific process to find the right people for the board with the right skill sets. And as a result of that, organically, we found ourselves with 50% women. So I think what that demonstrates is how important it is on a board such as ours to really have an open mind uh, when you're looking for what the skill sets are that you need, the background and knowledge is, rather than gender. Yeah, yeah. I mean, skills, everything, isn't it? And ability to step up at the right moment as well. But isn't it great that it's happened in that way, which is just terrific. And, you know, one of the things I want to observe, too, is that we are all looking forward to doing, doing and seeing something where you're both Melbourne based clubs playing in Perth in Western Australia. How is that going to feel for both of you? Kate, what does, what's it feel like? Yeah, look, we're, we're in lockdown, so we don't really know, but I'm certainly speaking to the media enough to say it, the support over here for AFL is enormous anyway. I mean, WA is an AFL state. But as minor premiers, we, we had a bit of a choice in terms of where we could sort of set up and play our games. And we knew that the, the Perth supporter would be here. You'd fill that stadium um, just off the back of this probably being the only time that the AFL grand final will be played over in this city for in our lifetimes, um, potentially. So, you know, we did really think a lot about that. As Kylie said, they've travelled everywhere. We've had our um, team over here for nearly a month away from their families and wow. and partners. They they haven't seen anyone. Um, their partners and families aren't allowed in. Kylie and I barely got here, you know, through exemption, um, hence the reason we come out of quarantine so late. So, you know, they've been set up here as their home base, but it's been extraordinarily difficult being away from, you know, a lot of them have young children and babies and um, the Perth people have been just so supportive of this whole experience, the AFL of our team. And, you know, it's it's unique. There's no doubt about that. But, you know, you can't opt out of COVID. So you just have to go with the flow. And, you know, really um, outside of Melbourne, you're probably going to get the most excitement for a, a grand final fever over here in Perth. The supporters have just been extraordinary. Oh, well, that's that's such such a great thing to hear. Now, of course, all of us have been looking both online walking around the neighborhood when we're allowed to do our walks. The colors you see in Melbourne are amazing. And of course, they're similar in part. I mean, there's a bit of red and blue in all of us and a bit of white in some of us, but it's mm -hmm. everywhere. I have never seen, there's even, you know, art trails now for the Bulldogs, noting all the Bulldogs designs in Footscray and everywhere in the West. So Kylie, are you aware of the amount of attention that it's getting back home? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's clear that, you know, our embrace this moment in course we're so disappointed that we can't have them at the game and, and recognize that people are feeling really disappointed about that but we certainly hope that the game itself will bring them immense joy uh, as you mentioned Adam you know, the fact that they are dressing their their houses their fences their doors is just really wonderful to see uh, the whole the whole Bulldogs family getting by uh, our playing group from the other side of the country and I know that the boys here are really feeling that. Well, I think the primary colors in all the Taubman stores have been just run out completely. You know, the red, blue and white, all gone, you know. So <laughs> it's just great to see. So now if you think about it too, just ask you this, Kylie, what do you think would get the Bulldogs over the line on Grand Final Day? Is there some special X factor? Well, something that, you know, I'm really proud of, of our club and, and what I think is at the heart of, of the Western Bulldogs uh, is real doggedness, uh, pardon the pun, but I do think that that really is at our core and 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 really what we truly represent as a club. So, you know, I really think that tenacity, uh, determination, and of course, an absolutely unshakable self-belief will get the boys there. Yeah, well, there's certainly a lot of people believing in their belief too, which is great. But also just to be fair, Kate, asking a similar question, what do you think the Ds will have 
in the tank to power them across the line? What would be the difference? What, what's, the, what's their special thing? Yeah, look, you know, this is a grand final. And, you know, the, I asked Paul Ruse when I first started on the board, I said, what's it take to win one? And he said, good list. Well, we've both got that. You know, good uh, luck with injury. We both fortunately have had that. And he said, then it comes down to so many things on the day, the bounce of the ball and, the, you know, the call of the umpire. He said, you know, you've got to have a bit of that uh, run your way. But I think for us and so many people have commented to me or asked about this from a cultural perspective is that selflessness that, this team shows, I spoke to Simon Goodman, who's the, the coach of the year, was announced last night. I spoke to him this morning and, you know, he clearly said, I would swap that any day of the week for a premiership with that team. And Clayton Oliver said that same thing about his um, player of the year coaches award. And all of the players said that about their, um, you know, all Australian jumpers as well. So this team is playing not even for themselves um, and their teammates anymore. They're playing for this club that has, you know, for, for so long suffered so much you know, tragedy, the names that are synonymous with football, uh, some of the great tragedies, the the Neil Danaher's, who's, um, you know, fighting MND now. We've got um, Jimmy Steins, who passed away. We had Norm Smith, who was removed from his position when they'd won a premiership. We've got Ronnie Barassi, who's, you know, our 64 players nearing the end of their life. So, you know, our, our players are playing for um, the supporters and, and those people, and it brings a selflessness that I think we've seen throughout the year, and it's what has really you know, seen us finish up as, as minor premiers. They've kept standing up when we've asked them to in the face of adversities that all teams have done this year. And I hope that they and expect them to do it again on, on Saturday. Oh, well, it's, it's every possibility of that happening. And just think about it, a baby born 57 years ago would have never seen the Ds win the premiership. Well, that's not a baby anymore. So it's pretty well, exciting. I wasn't born when we won our last premiership. So... You know, so many people tell me I was there. I was like, I wasn't even born. I wasn't even, I was a long way from being born at that um, that point in time. So, yeah, it's it's been an enormous amount of time. And Kylie knows because you were 60, 67, was it, when when um, you broke your first? <laughs> yes, how many years was it, Kylie? Uh, well, 1954 was the last time we'd run the grand final before 2006. Look, so you, you can vote. You have a fellow feeling about that for sure. And as, you know, as chairs of your clubs, I mean, both of you would have that sense of pent up belief that time has now come. So, so Kylie, do you echo that sort of sense of selflessness too? I get that a lot from you about the club. Yeah, there's no question. I mean, I think that, that that's, that's the heart of football. I mean, when you think of um, everything to do with the way in which uh, our team comes together across all of the different areas of, of both the business, business itself or the business side, the commercial side, uh, and the football side as well, there, there really is that, you know, collaboration work and prepare to um, put yourself aside and 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 really lean into what's best for the club and, and for the team so absolutely like uh, I have to say that's something we aspire to in the university too everybody is in a sense a volunteer in that regard wanting to do more than just the day job you know which is where it really comes good but all I can say is we cannot wait I mean it's just you know as children say it's only a couple of sleeps it's coming soon but we're proud to have such great leaders such powerful dynamic leaders, not only around us in Victoria University, but with us as partners and leading two of the best clubs in the universe. May the best team, of course, win, but also the best players just relish it and the best crowd enjoy every minute. And what I, what I can say is I'll be cheering for one of the teams that might have the initials WB, but only by a nose. So thanks very much <laughs> to both of you. It's great. Thanks, Adam, appreciate it. You bet. Thanks, Adam.